I'm going to be dealing particularly this week with five basic principles of movement and this is for anyone who's involved in any of the movement arts. I'm not just going to be talking about Tai Chi but as there's a plethora of people, hi, hi, as a plethora of people are suddenly appearing on Facebook Live offering classes in Qigong etc etc I thought I'd offer something a little bit different and that's going to be looking at fundamentals of movement. Five classes, five days at this hour with me. If you know who I am, my name's Paul Reed. I'm a teapot monk. Come by my site teapotmonk.com for courses and stuff like that if that's what you're interested in. This is just basics live. The important thing about live, before we get onto it, is we connect at the same moment, which is really great. So instead of doing it at some point in the future, when you get round to it, you make a commitment, you're there, and then you share it with everybody, which is great. So, okay, so quick word to my friends in Spain who are wondering why it's in English this week. Empezamos esta semana en inglés, pero vamos a volver la semana que viene en castellano. Por favor, síganos de todas formas. Muy, muy, muy fácil los ejercicios como la semana pasada. Vale. Okay, that's enough of that. So this week, five subjects to do with movement. And we're going to start today with flow. The strange thing about flow is that it's what we're all pursuing in Tai Chi. We want to be able to find that sense of effortless movement and harmony in what we do. Everything coordinated, everything soft, everything relaxed. So, where do we get it from? How do we know if we're going to get it from where it is that we're studying? Well, there just happens to be three useful exercises for you to develop that concept. Just waiting for a tractor to go past in the street. So, if you've ever seen a film with anyone doing any Tai Chi in, this is what it looks like. Extremely wooden, extremely fragmented, disconnected sort of moves. Why does it look so bad? Because in Tai Chi we try and do everything from the waist starting and finishing there. If it's not coming from the waist, it doesn't really matter what these hands are doing. If it's not coming from the waist, it's gonna look wooden. And that's why actors on TV and in the films who try to do Tai Chi are so appallingly bad at it. But with these three exercises, they could win an Oscar. The first, to free up your waist and discover the sense of flow is merely to shift your weight from one side to the other, as I'm doing now. You can all join in. See how my weight goes from side to side? Easy. Bending the knees, keeping them soft, shifting the weight from one foot to the other. Not lifting the foot off the ground. Now, first thing we're going to do is as we shift from side to side, we're going to start to turn in the direction that we're putting the weight. Very slightly, turn the waist from side to side. Try and keep your back upright and your head up and your arms relax. Imagine your arms have just been broken. You've got no control of them and they just follow your waist. That's what you're trying to do. Note the weight going from side to side. Good. Now as you get more and more used to this exercise of shifting your weight from side to side, your arms get more relaxed and they will follow your waist. As your waist turns more vigorously, your arms will follow suit. Your arms aren't doing the work. It's all in the waist. So if I move very vigorously, my arms follow suit. If my waist stops, my arms stop. And this movement is seen in all Tai Chi forms. Don't tell me it's not in yours, it is. Waving hands in clouds. Shifting from side to side. 
So if you'd like to practice a Tai Chi move and you don't know any, once you've got the feet, you just allow the arms to move in a large figure eight circle. That's one exercise. The second is the reverse of that. If we turn towards the left, say, instead of the weight going in the left leg, it goes in the right, which frees up that foot to turn on the heel and bring up the toes. See my toes? There it is. Come back to the center, shift the weight over, which frees up that foot to turn. So as we go from side to side, once more, side to side with relaxed arms, we're shifting the weight back in the leg, sitting into that back leg. The arms again follow suit. Doesn't matter what the arms do. What we can think about doing is pulling someone down, as in a Tai Chi move here, pulling someone down towards you, or just turning, just rotating each side. Doesn't really matter. It's all in the waist. That's what we're looking for. It doesn't matter what the arms are doing. Forget that, it's not important. It's all in the waist. Opening up the pelvis, opening up the knees, and shifting your weight from side to side. Now, you may say to yourself, you're just making that up. No, I'm not. Right at the beginning of the form, right at the beginning of the form, one of the first moves you do, if you're doing a Yang style version, is hold the ball. Toe up, weight in the back leg. So it's there right at the beginning and it's repeated throughout the whole form. So that's the second waist exercise to develop flow, connecting your arms, your legs and your torso to your waist. Third and final exercise, variation on number two. Weight goes into one leg, turn the opposite way, but don't bring up the toe this time, bring up the heel. When the heel's up, push it slightly forward, separating the pelvis a little bit more. Just like that. Come back to the center, turn, change, change your weight off to the other side, pick up the heel, push the heel to the front. Come back to the center. Keep doing that heel push as you turn your waist. Arms floppy. And you'll notice as you do this with the heel, this third variation, is that your arms change direction a little bit. Instead of going round in circles, they tend to go forward and back like the pendulum of a big grandfather clock here. Out, back. One arm in front, one arm behind. One arm back, one arm behind. Don't worry if you don't get it straight away. It comes with practice and you've got to practice. So those are the three exercises for the waist that enables you to forget what's going on with fragmented moves and arms, but to concentrate on what's going on with the waist. It's from there that we get the origin of all the moves. It's there from where all of our strength comes from, the connection through the floor, directed through the waist, expressed through either the arms, legs, nose, eyebrow, top of ear, whatever it is that your sifu has told you. That's where we're getting it from. And it's general in all styles, in all martial arts, in all movement arts. That's what we're looking for. That sense of connection, that sense of flow, that sense of rhythm. Okay. Tomorrow, I'm going to come back and look at balance. If you're interested, if you're interested, if you're interested, leave a comment below. Tell me where you're from. If I don't already know you, I probably will. Share this amongst everyone you know and people you don't know and their enemies. And hopefully what we'll do over this quarantine period is encourage lots of other people to do live sessions throughout the day. So whenever you log on to Facebook, you're not just you're not just faced with cats and and death tolls from each country. You might actually get to see some interesting classes being taught by people you know which would be great throughout the day, logging on and learning something at the same time. So share it, share the idea, and come back tomorrow at the same time if you'd like to do the second set with me, different exercises. You've now mastered the art of flow. Tomorrow, balance. Thanks for coming. See you tomorrow.